Now I've been shooting with the RX100 Mark VII. This is actually one of Sony's latest compact cameras. And of course I've been using the A6600 and I'm also using the A6400 right here to film. And when I first got the RX100 Mark VII, I was of course impressed with all the features it had. It definitely was one of these point and shoot cameras that you're gonna wanna pick up if you're on the go and you wanna have higher quality content compared to something like your mobile phone. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the new Sony ZV-1. And this really is, and kind of a spoiler, this really is made for content creators compared to what I was already using, which was the RX100 Mark VII. Talked about some of the differences between the two cameras as well as some of the main features I really like. And with every new camera release, nothing is perfect. So I do also wanna to talk to you about some of the improvements I think Sony can make on the next version of ZV-1. And if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Aldrin Anastasio. I do a lot of drone tech tips, tutorials, and product reviews right here on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing and also hitting that bell to be notified when I post new videos. Now everything I'm gonna talk about in this video is gonna be timestamped down below. So if you guys wanna jump around, feel free to look at those timestamps. They're gonna be in the video description. Now I mainly got the RX100 Mark VII because of its form factor, it's so small. Something like this, you don't really mind having out in public. You don't feel too awkward vlogging and you know, kind of capturing all the moments with something like this, which is a small point and shoot camera. Especially with those if you're getting into the field of doing a lot more content creation or social media posting, you don't wanna necessarily or don't feel comfortable bringing something that's a lot bigger. Now before I go into all the things I like and some things I think they can improve on on the ZV-1. I'm just gonna compare the differences between the ZV-1 and the RX100 Mark VII really quick. Now the first thing of course you notice is the side screen on the ZV-1 versus the top screen on the RX100. I actually do like the side screen a little bit better because of the fact that you're now able to put on things on the top like a light or a microphone at the top without blocking the screen. Here you actually don't have the option because there is no cold shoe mount or hot shoe mount. You have to get a bracket or something separate in order for you to put some something like an external microphone or a light on the RX100. So I do like the side screen compared to that top screen. One feature I do like about this flip screen is that if you just open it up, it'll actually automatically turn on, which is pretty cool. And if you wanted to shut it off, you can actually turn it and shut it just like that and it'll automatically turn off. And the one thing I like about this is that you're able to flip the screen so you can actually have the back here with no screen. So if you are putting this in your pocket or your bag, you don't have to worry about scratching it up like you would on the RX100. On the top of the camera, they got rid of a bunch of things. There is no more pop-up flash. There's also no more viewfinder here like you have on the RX100. They have removed those and now have put the hot shoe mount on the top of the ZV-1, as well as a large microphone right here on the very top. Now there's pros and cons to both. Of course, if you are more on the photography side, the RX100 Mark VII will still probably be your better bet because it has a longer focal range, as well as the viewfinder, a lot of photographers will see a lot more benefit in bright daylight using a viewfinder versus a screen and also pop-up flash. Even though most people don't normally use pop-up flashes to go directly into your face, having the ability to at least light up an area if you are doing some photos, definitely a bigger plus over the ZV-1. Keeping it with the top, I do like how they simplified everything on the very top of the camera. We have a large record button versus a tiny record button here on the RX100, as well as the mode dials. There's no more dial anymore like we have on the RX100. They change it into a mode button. And the very bottom of the camera looks the same as well. Now the RX100 is a little more slim. They both use that same NP battery. So if you do have batteries from your older RX100 cameras, you are able to use them on the ZV-1. As far as the ports go, same ports. You do have the audio mic in. You also have the multi-USB as well as the HDMI out. And those are some of the differences as far as the exterior goes on these cameras. But now let's talk a little bit more about some of the main features of the new ZV-1 that I've been really liking for the past few days. Now stabilization is going to be of course, a big deal if you're gonna be out there vlogging, kind of moving around with the camera. There are three modes of stabilization. There's off, there's standard, and then there's also active. Now, if you're in off or standard stabilization, there is no crop, but if you are in active mode or you are actively using the stabilization, it does significantly crop into your video. And this is something I'll talk about more on the improvements section of this video, but that's definitely one of my concerns was the crop in on active mode because of the fact that you're almost always gonna want to have active stabilization on, especially if you're out there shooting video. And the fact that it always crops in a little bit too tight, in my opinion, is something that's a little bit more of a concern for me. A new button they added here on the ZV-1, which is really cool, is this defocus and clear button. So basically, if you wanted to have a lot more blurry background, you wanna keep a lot more focus on the subject, which was probably gonna be whoever's vlogging. So instead of you fumbling around trying to change the setting manually, all you have to do is press 
that button and the camera will automatically choose the best setting in order for you to get your subject in focus and blur out everything in the background. If you want everything back clear again, press the button and now it'll automatically change the settings so that everything is more clear. You're able to see things in the background in focus compared to defocus where the subject like myself would be in focus and everything else would be blurred out a little bit more. Now one of the features I really like about the ZV-1 is that they have this face auto exposure. Now what that really means is that if you're changing situations, if you're going from indoor to outdoor, or if you're going from something that has a lot of highlights in the back to a lot of highlights in the front, and you're moving around, you're gonna ideally want the person that's in the frame to be properly exposed at all times. So with face auto exposure, what it does, is it tries to keep your face exposed properly. Now it might blow out the background, so a lot of people might not like it, but most videographers and people who vlog will normally always want the person or subject always properly exposed. So that's kind of a give and take. You might blow out the background sometimes, but at least the subject is gonna be well lit. One thing I really like that they added on the ZV-1 is an internal ND filter. So if you ever shoot outdoors and you wanna have a little bit more focus on your subject and you wanted to possibly shoot at an open aperture, something like a 1.8 or a 2.8 here on the ZV-1. Now here on the ZV-1, it does have the internal ND filter, which allows you to now bring that shutter speed down a little bit more. That way you don't have that jitter in your video. It has a lot more smooth natural motion in it while at the same time keeping your aperture nice and wide open. Now on the new ZV-1 they have a huge mic here up top and they also include this wind muff right here which you're able to actually snap into the cold shoe or hot shoe mount right here on the very top which makes it super easy. As you can see here I have the mic muff it's not on there right now and there is definitely some breeze coming through so how does the audio sound? And what I'm gonna do now is of course put this on and see how much of a difference there is. And now I'm gonna put the mic on. And there you go, how does the audio sound now? Same thing, as you can see, trees are still moving, breezes are coming through. Let me actually give this a little turn here. Hopefully this cuts out some of that noise. Now, new ZV-1 does have slow motion or high frame rate capabilities as well. You can either shoot in 120 as well as even at 240. However, at 240, you're gonna want to be outdoors in really, really good lighting conditions. Once you start using 240 in a low light scenario, it starts to break down a lot more. 120 kind of feels like a sweet spot. One mode I really like about the new ZV-1 is product showcase. Now, initially when I was shooting with the RX100 or even on my A6600, it does have the option to do face and eye tracking. But the thing is, whenever you're showing something on camera like right here if I'm showing you guys this camera the camera is not gonna be in focus because it's always gonna be focusing on my face and on my eye so even if I show you like this this won't be in focus I'd have to always go like this and kind of hide behind the camera in order for the camera to be in focus but what Sony did with the ZV-1 is that you're able to now press a button and have product showcase, which means now anything that you show in front of the camera, even if your face tracking is on, it'll then put the product that's closest to the camera in focus. So for people like myself that do a lot of product reviews, really cool feature to have. That way, whatever's closest to the camera will be in focus, and then all you have to do is move it away, then it'll go back to focus to your face. And one of the things I like about the new ZV-1 is that when you are recording, you have this red light that is on right there. So if you are vlogging, you can clearly see that you are recording. Sometimes when you're using something like the Sony cameras on the RX100, even on my bigger cameras, you can't tell if you're recording. You have to look really close to the screen to see if you see that little record words at the very bottom of the screen. It will then turn off, and then once you start it up again, nice bright light. Now with every new camera, there's always improvements that they can make. Now I'm actually fortunate enough to be invited to Sony Camera Camp last year, where Sony actually invited us out there to test out all of their gear, able to hang out with a bunch of content creators, YouTubers, Instagram, I mean, pretty much everyone that's in the space. What was great is that Sony had everyone sit down in small groups for them to openly talk about what they like and don't like about the product. So there's a bunch of small sessions that went on during the week and everyone was able to give their feedback and ideally this is what they came out with which really covers a lot of what everyone had issues with. So that's one thing I really like about Sony. They're listening to their users, they're getting direct feedback from all the people that are really using it and making these incremental changes with each version. Now with that said, there's still a few things I would like to see them improve on on their next round, possibly the ZV-1 or whatever camera they come out with next. Now the first one we'll talk about is field of view. Now the one thing that this is geared towards is vloggers. Now it does have a 24 to 70 equivalent lens, but the problem with this is that if you're using the 
active stabilization, it does crop in even more. So that if you are vlogging and walking around with it, the field of view really only captures just your head doesn't really give you much of what is happening in the scene. Now, if you're gonna be vlogging, you're more than likely just gonna be hand holding the camera. And if you're hand holding the camera, you're really not gonna see much of anything behind you, especially if active stabilization is on. If you put something on like this, which is a switch pod, or even something like a Joby tripod, this brings it out to a more comfortable range for you to get yourself in there as well as some more background in the video. Now, next thing I hope they fix on the next version is the flip screen. Now, as you can see here, it is completely out all the way, but it is not perfectly 90 degrees or even more than 90 degrees like we have here on the RX100. This goes straight up and down. Here, as you can see, it does not. Since it was pointed outward a little bit, you end up kind of turning the camera more to adjust that angle so that I could see the screen a little bit more. A lot of times I'll be vlogging and I have to kind of adjust how I look into the monitor so that the screen is pointed towards you and not pointed away from you. Now, the next thing I hope to change on the next version is make the menu system fully touch screen. Now, you can touch it, like touch the focus, you're able to do that, but if you wanted to change settings while you're using the camera, you're not able to quickly change the settings here. You actually have to go back into the dials as well as into the menu system to make those changes. It would have been nice to just be able to touch right here and change your aperture, change your exposure, change your settings. Now the one thing I hope they update on this camera or just cameras in general that are really geared towards the on the go vlogger or you know content creator is the ability to have a quick switch button very similar to how the Osmo Action has it. Now here they have a mode button which does help you switch between the types of video or photos you wanna shoot. So I would like to see something integrated onto cameras like this. So if I shoot at you know 4K at 30 and I want to quickly go into 120 at 1080 to easily click that and have those settings already saved as a profile. And lastly, one of the updates that they need to do is move that quarter 20 either to the middle or a little bit over to the right a little bit more because of the fact that if you have something like this on your camera, if you have a tripod system here, you're not able to access the battery compartment. You have to remove this whole system here in order for you to get there. Plus the way it sits right now, it's actually not sitting in the middle. I don't know, I feel like it should be sitting in the middle of the camera more. Right now it's off to one side. And I think for me just with balance, now if I open up my screen, now everything is on this side, a little bit more heavy and it's not in the middle. I would have probably liked to have seen that quarter 20 at least in the middle of the camera. So while I'm shooting like this, I feel like it's a little bit more balanced. And there it is guys, just a bunch of features I've really enjoyed and some improvements I think that Sony might be able to make on their next version of this camera or some of the other cameras as well. You wanna keep things nice and kind of you know incognito, I would say a little bit more, but have really, really high quality image something like this definitely would be a really good option. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, don't forget to hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Alton Stasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.